Alrighty, alrighty. Today, shooting on the X Pro One per usual, but we got something new going on. Got a nice little Canon FD mount to FX Fujifilm mounts going on here. So what we got is a 50 millimeter F1.8 from my Canon A1 that we're gonna be shooting on today. We're at St. Pete Beach. So just gonna try it out, see how it goes and uh, have a little bit of fun here. Look at all that. We got some fog coming in over there. That's pretty crazy. I hope that does not impact the photos. Actually, that's kind of a crazy, crazy, crazy shot there. Tell you what. Dang, I do have to say this lens combination with the X-Pro1 is like nuts. Because you get like the soft haziness of a film camera because of the lens. But everything is still so incredibly sharp. Oop, did not mean to do that. Let's see here. Let's refocus here. Okay. Nice. It's so nice. You get like the really dreamy effect of a film lens on a beautiful, beautiful X-Trans 1 sensor. You know, you really can't beat that. Okay, maybe we go low, low. It's nice today. We got a, uh, like you saw, that beautiful haze from the fog coming in. It's honestly giving some pretty flat but definitive light, which is always, you know, always a must when it comes to photography. Just wait for this car to get out of frame here. See if I should stop that up a little bit. No, let's see. No. The only thing I will say, I am shooting at f22 right now. So these shots are completely closed. Which I typically, well, I guess it really depends on the style. You know, I um, will definitely shoot. At a low aperture when I'm shooting portraits, but I definitely shoot up in the, uh, you know, I would say like the 11 to 16 range when I'm shooting landscape and stuff. You know, try to bounce around, try to do things. Cause you know, we're cool like that. <laughs> oh yeah. That's quite an interesting scene right there. I'll try to stop it down a little bit for that. Oh, let's get centered here. All right. I mean, these pictures are just crazy. The haze, the haze from the fog is looking quite delightful. Uh, that is the one thing though, shooting into a light source on this is gonna be quite difficult to get anything really useful out of but sacrifices must be made let's see let's let's eight by ten glosses uh i'd sell them don't worry about it where at I'm, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> I'm John. How's it going? John, John. They named the room after us. Yeah, that's the best room in the place. It's the only <laughs> one that works. Exactly. <laughs> Pleasure meeting you. Pleasure. All right, so let's see here. Oh, perfect, perfect, perfect.
Oh yeah, that's the one right there. Yeah. We get John in frame, opening the door. It's always a pleasure. Oh, we got a cat in the window. It's beautiful. Stop that, oh my goodness, stop that down. Uh. I don't know if that was on focus, probably was, but we'll see. Oh my God, that's not a cat, that's a dog. Holy shit, holy shit. Okay, we gotta get that dog, we got to get that dog. Can I pet that dog? Can I pet that dog? Oh my God, that's adorable. It's absolutely adorable. But this scene right here, also majorly adorable, I mean, this is crazy. We literally haven't even left this spot. We've been stuck here. This whole time shooting the same exact thing. It's just, you just can't help it. When you see a beautiful scene, you gotta shoot it, right? That sign's kind of annoying being right there, but hey. Nothing's perfect. I mean, I must say, this setup, you know, I've been shooting, when I shoot film, I usually shoot with my uh, Canon A1. Uh, it's, I hate to admit it, but it's my only working film camera right now. Um, and when I shoot with that, you know, the thing I love about it is the detail, obviously, because the Canon A1 is just like a powerhouse, but you know, it all really comes down to the lens. When you're shooting, on a film camera, especially an SLR style camera. And this 50 mil F1.8 just, it's, it's nuts. It's absolutely beautiful. And the images that it creates, you know, obviously, like I said, massive detail, but incredible, like almost dreamy look to the photos which I know I'm sure all of my fellow film enthusiasts understand. They understand the beauty of that. And the good, oh, the other good thing about this is, you know, you do have to um, choose the option to shoot with the lens off on the Fuji, but um, you still get access to, um, you know, check your focus. When you press this, it gives you like a zoom. I'm like blanking on the uh, term for that right now, but it will zoom into the image very, very closely so you can like check your focus. Um, I didn't know if I was still gonna have access to that, but I do, which is always a delight. Let's see. There's beautiful scenes down here, absolutely beautiful scenes. I don't know how I've never shot down here before. I've lived here my whole life. I've never shot on this part of St. Pete Beach. I don't know why. I guess I'm just a bad photographer. <laughs> no, let's hope that's not the issue. Let's see here, how's that? No, that's too much. All right, let's journey. Let's journey, let's journey. Get out of this area, try something new. And I'm also trying out a new chest strap. So I'm hoping uh, in comparison to some of the recent uh, videos where I've had the camera mounted up here, um, I'm hoping it's not as shaky for you lovely, lovely viewers. Let's see here. I mean, in this, uh, oh my gosh, I love how this just completely slows down. Um, the process 
of shooting. Um, you know, that was like the biggest reason I bought the uh, Fujifilm X Pro One. I bought it with the intention to really just like uh, slow down my work tremendously. Um, you know, shooting fully manual. Uh, the only issue that I really had with that with this camera um, actually leads to the reason why I bought this mount so I could put this lens on it is yes the um, Fuji 27 millimeter f 2.8 uh, WR however you say that <laughs> um, it has an aperture ring which is great that's what I wanted but it's just like I don't know the focus ring on that is like literally this tiny little thing on the end of the lens which I mean no shade or anything but it just wasn't really allowing me to get like really beautiful focus just because it was all it's all uh, digital you know where this is mechanical and with the mechanical zoom you really have a lot more control um, and it was also a 27 millimeter so that comes out to around 40 millimeter on uh, the Fujifilm just because it is a cropped APS-C sensor. Uh, so that, you know, will crop your image uh, in your lens quite a bit, depending on what you're shooting with. And, um, you know, sometimes you got to switch it up. I was getting a little... Uh, I wouldn't say I was getting sick by any means of the 27 millimeter, but it was definitely starting to uh, get a little boring, you know, like with the 50 millimeter, especially with this, I did I, the only thing I didn't see was whether this had a crop or not, um, which obviously horrible review, you know, <laughs> but I don't remember seeing that there was a crop added with this adapter but uh with this 50 millimeter lens you know it comes into more of like 60 ish i want to say somewhere in the 60s but um you know it's definitely giving me a different perspective honestly like I said I was going to leave this area, and I still haven't, and I honestly am not, like, super mad about that. It's just, like, photos for days out here, you know? You just, like, really can't be mad about that. This is definitely rendering colors a lot differently as well than my, uh, you know, 27 millimeter lens that I typically shoot with. And uh, it's got a much, much um, deeper depth of field when you're uh, focusing, which is really nice. Um, I did a little sample photo. I did uh, two sets, actually, uh, when I first popped this lens on just to see, you know, what the real difference was uh, compared to the 27 millimeter. And um, I took two sets. Yeah, I already said that. Um, one of a um, plant. Uh, I know how original. Um, but I wanted to, you know, show off and at least test the uh, difference in depth of field because that view of the plant had a lot of busyness in the background. And that's one thing I did kind of have, um, I wouldn't say like an issue with, but I had to adapt my shooting style to it uh, with the 27 millimeter is, uh, you know, it doesn't really have incredible separation between your subject and background, especially if you're shooting uh, something that is, uh, you know, very textured. You know, it has a very similar textured background. And so um, I'll show those two images here and you can see the difference um, in separation. It's quite interesting, actually. Um, you know, I always could tell a difference when I was shooting on my Canon A1 with this lens. 
Uh, definitely found it to be a lot easier to separate the subject from the background. And I did another set, which I will show you now, of my mother. Um, and you know, that it, the one thing I will say about this is you can tell uh, with the difference in focal length, there is a lot of compression uh, trying to get up and close and get the same framing of my mother in the 27 millimeter, uh, just because it's a wider angle lens. Um, but you can see even the background, um, you know, the background, you could still kind of tell what's going on in the background on the 27 millimeter, but, um, on the 50, you know, the it's Boca, Boca galore, you know? And so that's really what I was looking for, uh, especially, you know, with the intention of still being able to use this camera, the Fujifilm for, you know, like portraits and stuff like that, where separation really just makes a massive difference in the photo. And uh, let's see here, what is this looking like? Uh, <laughs> what happens when you give a photographer with ADHD new gear and try to have him do a review? It's just all over the place. But being able to uh, really define separation in an image, at least for me, um, just adds so much more pizzazz, uh, I think, to the image and the emotional connection, I would say, to the subject. Um, just because it's more of a subject that way, in my opinion. Uh, it's not really working. But yeah, so overall, you know, this is really, really interesting. Uh, to use this lens on this camera, you know, because another thing I want to, you know, go off and rant about is how I've, you know, I've talked many, many a times about the, let's pump up to 250th of a second here. Um, I've really gotten into in some of my other videos, you know, the <laughs> absolute powerhouse that this X-Trans 1 sensor is. Uh, you know, Fujifilm really just was on a roll with this one. I think this is, in my opinion, one of their best sensors. I'm not, like, incredibly familiar with the later generations, but in terms of, well, I should say from the perspective of somebody who really shoots with the intention to capture a uh, very dreamy vintage look in their work... This just, I mean, does everything I could ever ask it to do. And I honestly have had no complaints with this camera. You know, I feel like uh, a lot of people talk about its focusing abilities. But like I said, if you're slapping a uh, an old film camera lens on here, focusing is not going to be, you know, up to the camera. You got to do it yourself. But, I mean, here I am tra digressing again. Uh, this lens with the X-Trans 1 sensor, nuts. Absolutely incredible. The way that the colors are rendering in through this lens, I mean, it's just some of the best looking colors, you know, I've ever really seen. I'm obsessed. I'm obsessed. I'm going to talk about this forever. Um, yeah. And I know this is a, a much different style video than uh, you all are used to, I would say, or even I am used to filming, but I wanted to have my first impressions recorded, um, you know, for anybody who's interested in viewing to see. I think... Uh, Vintage glass on modern day cameras is something that's starting to get uh, dabbled in in the photography scene. And I think it's something that will really boost your ability to uh, frame an image. Because, you know, like I said, shooting with vintage glass, everything's manual. You can't rely on the camera to do anything for you. Um, especially shooting on a camera like this, you know, everything 
is already designed to be manual. You got the shutter speed dial here. And with this lens, you got the aperture ring here and then focusing here. Um, one thing that is digital, but I mean, you still have to manually set it every time is ISO. And for me personally, especially on a day like this, I'm gonna be shooting around like um, 400. I think I'm shooting at 400 right now. I am, I'm shooting at ISO 400. And for that, I have it mapped to the function button up here. So I just click that and then, you know, select it in the viewfinder what I, uh, what I want, you know? And a couple of other things you probably noticed that you can't see anything here. I turn the screen off because I try to not view the screen while I am shooting. I'm sure you guys have noticed that in some of my stinky pits videos that I'll take a picture and then I'm just, boom, looking at it. Let me see, how did it turn out? And honestly, it disconnects you from what's going on around you, um, especially in the street. Oh my gosh, like you need to be on your like toes when you're shooting street photography being ready to really capture anything. And you know, if you guys are anything like me, I'm sure you've watched plenty of other videos uh, from people like Polly B and you know, the almighty Joe Greer. <laughs> um, but for me personally, you know, like walk, watching a walkie talkie by Polly B. Um, I know Polly B's focus in those videos isn't, you know, to be shooting, he's videoing the people that are taking pictures, but I'm sure, just like I said, if any of you are like me, you're watching these videos and you're seeing scenes that you're like, okay, why didn't you take a picture right there? Um, and so that's just like, you know, you gotta be like really focused. And I think that's uh, something that really, you know, you can achieve with a camera like this. I'm starting to just, talk a bunch of bullshit right now because i'm trying to shoot some amazing pictures oh 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 yeah 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 that's uh that's it right there and um yeah so yeah let me just uh keep rambling it on we're gonna head out to the beach here try to get some nice little shots of some things who knows if that turned out we'll see but uh as you can see quite a foggy day at the beach this is crazy i it's been a long time since i've seen it look like this This is quite interesting. You know, I had the intention of testing this out for some long exposures later to get the sunset, but I don't think I'm going to see a sunset. And also, I haven't uh, I haven't checked the video, so if it is shaky, I'll need to adjust this chest strap a little bit, but nothing that can't be fixed. This is crazy. I mean, I feel like I'm like at the, in the desert right now. <laughs> like, wow, I haven't seen it this fucking foggy in a long time. Excuse my language. in a pretty decent shot here, maybe. All right, let's see. Um, just so you all can see what I'm looking at here. Try to get this nice and focused in, get a nice little meter going here. Okay. All right, lady, come on, walk, 
Walk. Walk. Okay. This is crazy. This is absolutely crazy. Oh my gosh. Oh man, this isn't good. I'm gonna have to back up. Seat is spraying. All right, well, we gotta get off the beach because I don't know if it's the fog or if the ocean is spraying up. There's a lot of mist. And mist does not mix well with cameras. What's black and white looking like right now? That's actually pretty sick. Not gonna lie. Well, I have to take that picture. Oh. Okay. That's an interesting one. Yeah, you know, yeah. Let's switch to black and white. Kind of losing the uh, the brightness of the colors. With this fog. Alright, get some decent shots here. I've got bad news. The camera is about to pass away on us. So I'm gonna try to go around and get a couple more shots. The black and white turned out pretty sick, I'm not gonna lie. Um, I can confirm that this lens being adapted on this camera is incredible absolutely incredible let's see maybe we can get oh that building look at that the building is just like gone fog has taken over silent hill is here ladies and gentlemen Pretty nuts, not gonna lie. It's fog. Let's see. Oh, if this car wasn't here, this shot would be crazy. All right, well, um, I think we did best we possibly could have given these circumstances weather-wise um, all right well 
Not bad. Not bad. All right. Hello. All right, let me get this thing off of here. All right, so here's the setup, by the way. If anybody's interested, I'll link it in the uh, description. This thing is honestly a lifesaver. Um, it's going to be interesting to use this while I am photographing in Pittsburgh, doing some street photography. Um, if you need a little bit of a better view of this, here is the lens. It's a beautiful, beautiful lens. And the adapter right there. So I'm really excited to do some more uh, photos with this thing. Um, happy to be photographing out here. Uh, it's going to be my last video, I think. We'll see. Um, in the St. Pete area before I move to Pittsburgh. So it's bittersweet, but hey, it's fun. It's beautiful out here. Love capturing this place. Um, I know this video was a lot different from what I usually post. Very little editing to this, but, you know, I, I had fun shooting it. So that's all that matters. So, yeah, I will um, see you all in the next video. Uh, I have a really special video coming out soon, which is going to be uh, fun to show, fun to display. And... I think after that, it's going to be back to, back to the street, back to the street, back to Pittsburgh and just grinding out some videos of street photography and some Q and A's. Um, I really would like to get connected with a lot of photographers in the uh, Pittsburgh scene and maybe do like videos with them. You know, I, I know like Polly B does the walkie talkies, um, I would like to do something a little different where it's very uh, similar to the shooting style that I have done for like stinky pits where you kind of get that like uh, POV, but almost like, you know, you're there with me or us if I'm with somebody else and kind of we just go around, shoot pictures, talk about photography or whatever we want and uh, see how it goes. I am trying to put it all together right now so stay in tune stay stay tuned in stay whatever <laughs> keep in touch and um that was horrible that was absolutely horrible i'm so sorry you had to listen to me say that uh but yeah no stay tuned um definitely got some interesting stuff coming so if you're liking this you like my work you know tag along so I'll see you all in the next video. Can't wait. Peace.